Uh, my name is Giacomo Rambaldi. I work for uh, CTA. And uh, I've been using uh, the platform, the dgroup platform, for more than a decade now. Um, this is one of the dgroups uh, uh, I'm administering. And specifically, this uh, dgroups uh, uh, deals with uh, drone technology for agriculture. These dgroups uh, started about two years ago. And uh, one of the key uh, issues we, uh, we came across when uh, starting to deal with the technology was that the adoption of the technology is heavily influenced by regulations. And uh, we did an assessment uh, <clears throat> across uh, Africa, Pacific, and Caribbean to find out that very few countries two years ago had uh, any regulation in place. Uh, several countries just uh, were forbidding the import and use of drones, um, lack of any, any way to, to control their use. And uh, so we wanted to have a clearer idea on, on the situation. And uh, we, uh, we relied a lot on, on the members of the groups to, uh, to collect information. We were part also, this is the interface of the group. And this is one of the things you can, uh, you can do. You can customize the home page, uh, have welcome messages, and also uh, create dedicated URLs um, to, uh, to lead people, to funnel people uh, into the, into the D-groups. Uh, the D-groups we are managing, most of them are open groups. And I will talk about that later on, where people can, uh, uh, can, uh, can apply to become members. So uh, we, one of the objectives of that particular action within, within the group was to populate an online database. This was an effort done with a, with a number of development agencies. Uh, there were a few at that time, two years ago, there were a few databases existing uh, featuring uh, uh, legislations, featuring regulations uh, governing the use of drones. But uh, they were very scanty, non-updated. Non and so this platform was set up. Um, uh, and it is a Wikipedia-like platform with uh, individual uh, curators of national pages. and. Uh, uh, so we, with members from more than 100 countries on the D-groups, we were able to uh, mobilize the whole community in coming up with information about uh, uh, national legislation. And this is the distribution of the, of the membership. And uh, these are some statistics. We are close to 1,000 members now. I'm, it's very similar to the previous presentation around covering around 100 countries. We had it about 1,000 contribution, and the, uh, the community has been growing very fast. We have also equivalent uh, communities on, uh, on other social media, uh, Twitter and, and Facebook. And, but this one is the, the, the group which has the most serious uh, discussion, where the discussions are really intensive, technical, and, uh, and uh, looking at uh, legal aspects uh, where, where, the, where the members are engaging much more than on, uh, on, uh, on Facebook. Facebook, it's just we just share information. We just share um, activities which are done here and there. And Twitter, it's a, a news bulletin, more or less, while the real discussion happens on, on, on D group. Now, uh, why, why D groups? I think that my colleagues have have already uh, flagged some of the of the positive sides of new groups um, I, I won't repeat everything I'm mean, just going to to highlight the privacy aspect I think that uh, uh, what what uh, is featured in the news in these days with the, this breach uh, at, at, at face at Facebook I mean um, D groups is really private. There is no parsing of content to serve you advertisements. There is no profiling of members, and nobody uh, is going to, to 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 harvest what you say, what you think, and who you are to make uh, other use of of, of that information. Um, what is in important for the administrators is that you can easily customize the the groups. You can uh, define whether a group is moderated or not, whether it is visible uh, or not on, on the web. Um, 
And then one thing which was not mentioned is that you can create sub-communities. So, for example, we have a sub-community uh, on, 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 uh, on the group dealing with drones, which is geographically defined. Another one may be thematically defined and so on. Um, well, uh, commonly at CTA we use D groups um, when we have projects. When, for example, when we organize a conference, we can create a, um, a number of D groups uh, because you have working groups who are participating in the organization of, of an event. And, uh, and this, this kind of working groups are um, usually private, uh, by invitation only. They are non-moderated, so uh, the postings are going through immediately. And they die out when the event has been uh, uh, completed. But still, you can, uh, since you can upload documents, uh, they can still be um, uh, a repository of, of information and exchanges. Uh, what we also use dgroups for are to create, animate, and nurture communities of practice. These are usually public. Uh, usually, we moderate these communities because when you have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people, you don't want to have somebody writing, hello, how are you, and uh, let's keep in touch, and so on, because these kind of messages are quite disruptive. Uh, and here in these kind of uh, communities, we accept unsolicited application, but they are reviewed by the moderators. Um, well, uh, I think Saskia mentioned that there is a website where you can get more information on dgroups. Here is the URL. And I invite everybody to, to look into that, because dgroups is a real uh, powerhouse for communication and exchange in the development work. Thank you very much to everybody.